Let us look at question number 21 and you will automatically realize this is alternative 2. Sir, there is this shoe manufacturing company which is all equity finance which means there is no debt, alright. X Limited has hired a consultant to analyze the future earning. We are the company, we have hired someone that you need to analyze the future uh, earnings. That consultant, they, that someone has given the report that earning and dividend will grow by 25% for the next two years. So let me create again a timeline for you which will give you the complete conceptual clarity. One year, two year. The earning and dividend both will grow at the rate of 25% for the next two year. Can I mark it? So let me mark earning to be in green and dividend to be in red. So they will grow at the rate of 25-25%. How much are they? We don't know. But let us at least mark the growth rates. So let me write it down, 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, alright, fine. Earnings are likely to grow at the rate of 10% from third year and onwards, which means from third year and onwards, go, don't take it otherwise that after third years. When they say for the next two years, which means picture of two year is done, which means for third year and onwards. Check this out. Hold on. First of all, let me create the timeline. This is third year, this is fourth year, which means from third year and onwards, my earning will grow at the rate of 10%. 10%, 10%, 10%. What about dividends? Because for the purpose of solving question, whose growth rate do we need? This is now the eye opener because a lot of students who have already taken their batches and who are studying now the faster batch will now realize a lot of new things starting with the first one that while solving the question they are directly made to use the given growth rates in the question without they realizing that these are the growth rates of earnings which is what which is what is not important. As we have clearly learned in the concepts notes that growth rate of dividend is important, not of the earnings. Growth rate of dividend is important. D1 till D infinity, not E1 till in E infinity. Sir, D is important. All right. So, sir, we need to look at this growth, not this growth. First thing. Second thing. Sir, if the earnings grow by 10% third year onwards, then the dividend payout ratio will increase to 50%. Which means right now there would be some payout ratio which we don't know. Right now there would be some payout ratio which we don't know. But from this year onwards, the payout ratio will change. Let us everyone in the class mark the payout ratio. Let us mark the payout ratio. So once this the growth rate will change to 10%, payout ratio everyone in the class will change to 50%. Do you first of all observe that payout ratio of this point is not given? But we are fine with it. Second thing do you observe that payout ratio is something else over here and it will change to 15% over here. This particular line has two implications. The clarity of concepts everyone please focus. One, with the change in payout ratio do you realize I am supposed to follow alternative 2 and not alternative 1? I am supposed to follow alternative 2 and not alternative 1. First thing. 
second clarity of concept which i have already spoken just repeating that where should i stand for terminal value don't look at this timeline people in the class what are you doing to me what do i discount the earnings or the dividends the dividends which is why for the purpose of finding out where should i calculate tv look at this timeline not earnings timeline cool which means i now need to create this timeline let's create it everyone because of change in payout because of change in payout can i say my growth rate of earnings will not be the same as growth rate of dividend as in the growth rate of dividend will not be the same of same as the growth rate of earning for this particular year how many of you recollect those concepts are you able to process that this growth rate everyone in the class this growth rate everyone in the class will not be 10% will not be everyone 10% is not 10% why because the payout ratio was something else here payout ratio was something else here which is changing i have written it over here changing payout changing payout which means this is not 10% fine but imagine the growth rate after it what do you think about these growth rates will these growth rates be constant everyone will this growth rate be 10% yes sir if the payout ratio of two points is constant then the growth of earnings will be same as growth of dividends which means sir over here we are settled that this will be 10% this will be constant 10% only and this is now since you have the timeline of dividend available to you first think if you have to apply you won't have to actually apply alternative one but if you have to apply alternative one tell me which terminal value would you calculate sir i will calculate tv3 because if i stand at the end of third year and look at the future i get i see only one growth of 10% of my dividends forget earnings i'm talking about dividends which means if i have to apply alternative one i will calculate tv3 because from third year onwards i see only one growth rate of 10% but since it is a case of change in payout what will i have to take alternative what will i have to follow alternative one or two alternative two sir and if i follow alternative two i have to look at the i have to stand basically a year in, in like a year backward as compared to alternative 1 which means i will have to calculate tv2 which says that tv2 says that i don't care about the growth rate from d2 to d3 the growth rate which matters to me is d3 to d infinity for the purpose of tv2 which means if i calculate tv2 i will then need to manually discount only d1 and d2 and discounting these three things will give me iv0 or p0 is the clarity of concept reaching to you everyone all my live and recorded people tell me how much out of 10 are you people settled with the concept the clarity the precision with which we are learning the things everyone sahil are you settled how much out of 10 are you settled i can repeat it as many times as you want but i cannot compromise in the quality of concepts that you have people let me simplify it for you sir this growth rate we know it will be something else how much will it be we will figure out but are you clear with this fact that i can calculate tv through because tv2 because i need d3 till d infinity d infinity's growth rate to be constant which is 10% 1 to 
2 to 3 dividend growth rate is something else we'll figure it out which means i need to calculate tv2 and now only those students with this clarity will know that we have to create table like 1 2 and 2 that's all second year's dividend and second year's terminal value so basically if the year which has just ended the year which has just ended we will learn it later is 2014 if the year which has just ended is 2014 people if it is 2014 i need 2015 and 2016 so my column rows will be 2016 15 2016 and 2016 that's all i will need so basically everyone in the class i will stand here at this point and calculate tv2 if you create this timeline this is the clarity of concept now everyone do you even know what is being actually taught to students if students are first of all not given this clarity that you have to look at the growth of dividend even if they are given this clarity they are not being taught these two alternatives they are not being taught that how is this change in payout creating this difference and you have to take alternative to you know what they have been rather taught they have been asked in the class to take the growth of earnings and not the growth of dividends which is a scam which is being taught to them and they say that since earnings are constant from this point let us create the terminal value from here now with clarity you know that we create the terminal value at second year only but the logic is now correct that sir change in payout change in growth but doesn't matter to us because d2 to d3 can be a different growth rate tv2 will be an alternative to of calculating terminal value and the constant growth of 10 percent can be used this is the clarity where you have applied everything everyone in the class which is why i said the golden's people think is an easy thing but beyond formula is the analysis and we don't focus on formula we focus on the analysis the depth of it everyone with that, with that, let us proceed to solve the question. One more thing which I want to teach you. It's question number 21, right? Now you write down this note over here. Now you also realize the beauty of outnotes which is being there. Generally, alternative 1 is preferred. However, alternative 2 will apply to questions in which dividend payout ratio of future years is changing just like question number one there are certain notes which you need to realize are important but you may not be able to recollect their meaning unless we give them a reference of a question number question 21 one more note which is very much important for you i will make you people relate let us first go to that question sir which means very important thing you must realize now. Very important and interesting thing. Do you know this growth rate? No. Which means if I directly create a table of dividend, will I be able to find out future dividends because this growth rate is missing? No, I cannot. Which means do you realize I cannot make a table of dividend directly. I will have to make a table of earnings as well. Because growth rate of earnings is clear to me. And using earnings I will apply the payout ratio. And I will automatically get a growth. Get the amount of dividends which cannot be directly found out. Are you understanding what did I just explain? Since this particular growth rate is missing. I cannot follow the directly dividends. I cannot directly create the dividends table which I was actually creating like this, like this. I will have to in my solution create one more column, in fact two more columns where I will have to show how much is the earnings growing and of those earnings how much is the payout ratio so that I can calculate the amount of dividends right and that is what being is written in this note over here listen listen if the dividend payout ratio is changing in the future years then growth of dividend then growth cannot be applied directly to dividends because we don't know such growth is rather applied to eps and then dps is calculated using dividend payout ratio this is also being done in question number 21 so when you do question number 21 and read these two notes, things will be absolutely clear to you, right? Hence, if you look at the format, I have 
created a column of EPS and if you want you can also create a column of payout ratio for your ease. So column will be EPS, column will be payout ratio and the columns will be cash flows which will have dividends actually. Requesting your response are you people why clear why is the presentation different everyone. I need your response now the question is actually not yet complete if you realize we have not even read the question forget the solution life people recorded people could I convey to you are you people liking the stuff everyone please which means which means let us proceed to solve this question other data related to companies as follows year 2010 <laughs> it is actually funny we have spent 30 minutes to do something in which we have not even read the question forget the solution all right so we need to speed up now we need to everyone speed up sir data from 2011 12 13 14 is given when the past data is given sometimes i am afraid when the past data is given sometimes i am afraid that they might make us apply this 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 data of past year back calculating the compounded growth fortunately they have themselves given the growth why do i need to worry clarity they have themselves given the growth anyways so i have past years dps past years eps share prices you may assume the tax rate to be 30 percent not expected to change in future i don't even care about tax rate I already have the number of EPS and post tax cost of capital is 15%. Oh my God. What do I need? For the purpose of discounting, what do I need? KE or KO people? What do I need? KE. What have they given KO? But you know what? Some students have thought. What? Sir, that if I am all equity financed, if I am all equity financed, then isn't my cost of capital is only the cost of equity. Because I am all equity financed. It is not randomly we assume things. It is based on the information we are. And even if this information would be missing, we will assume that, okay, the company might have only equity, which is why KO is assumed KE. Not that KO can also be used in the formula. What a beautiful question. Even I didn't know that is, is, it is this. It is this much in this question. It is as I'm reading it and solving it, I'm just explaining the stuff. Sir, by using dividend valuation, calculate expected market price. Let us now proceed sincerely. All right. We need market price. We need P0, which means I need D1, I need D2, and I need TV2. For TV2, I need D3 divided by K minus G. Now, dividends I cannot calculate directly. I have to follow the EPS path and then calculate D3, applying payout ratio. Which means my table will look like EPS, payout ratio and DPS. Let us start to solve it in the notebook. Let us get that comfort. Everyone quick. Let us get that comfort. Part A, let us start taking it in the notebook. Price of share, right? Years, EPS, payout, either you can write cash flows over here or you can write DPS and terminal value, both things. Present value factor, discounted cash flow. Year will be 2000 C. Observe this, observe this. Data till 2014 has been given, which means we stand at the end of 14. The first year, the first future year, the first future year for us is 2016, 2015, sorry. So for 15 and 16, EPS will grow at the rate of 25%. EPS will grow at the rate of 25%. What is the present EPS? What is the present EPS? it is 9.6 so let us grow 9.6 by 25 percent everyone 9.6 plus 25 percent give me 12 9 12 plus 25 percent gives me 15 
All right. The growth rate, the growth rate, one second, yeah. what am I doing? I can open two things simultaneously. Why am I switching from here to there? Anyways, so we have the dividends as 12 and 15, of which the payout ratio, we don't know. Let me now try to teach one more thing. One way is that I calculate this payout ratio. Which one? This payout ratio I calculate, right? And apply the same payout ratio over here. A easy thing would be to understand what has examiner told you. Both earnings and dividend will grow 25%. So if you have the amount of dividend as 3.84 here, if 3.84 is available to me, can I grow it directly 25% for two years? Just for two years, not this year I'm saying, because the payout ratio will change, but at least for the next two years, can I make it 25% growth for easy calculation? Because maybe the payout ratio was constant for all three years, right? So if you want, you can calculate the payout ratio. If you don't want, you don't calculate, but DPS, I can grow 25% directly. 3.84 plus 25% is 4.8. plus 25% is 6. So how much was the payout ratio basically? 3.84 divided by 9.6. The payout ratio actually was 40%. If you want to calculate, I am writing it with my pencil that it is actually 40%. Why pencil? Because not compulsory to calculate over here because it can directly be done like this. Cool. For next year, Again, for 2016, if I need to calculate terminal value, how much will be my EPS? Sir, growth changes to 10% for third year. So 15 plus 10%, let us calculate. So it is like 15 plus 10%, it is 16.5. Of which the payout will be, as they are saying, is 50% into 50% is 24.75. Sorry. 16.5 into 50% is 8.25. But you know what? One thing which may hold on, please don't write. Even if the concept is clear to you, presentation will be a problem. Because when I stand at 2016, I cannot write these words over here. So let me keep it easy for you. Let me delete it for you and tell you one thing. It will be 15 into 1.1. Basically 15 of EPS, growth rate of 10% and multiplied by 50% of payout ratio will give me, will give me actually the dividend I want to calculate which is D of 2017. What is this? This is nothing but D of 2017, which is 15 EPS plus growth for 16. Sorry, 16 EPS, 2016 EPS plus growth for 17 into the payout ratio of 17 divided by K of how much is the cost of capital? Required rate of return is 0 0.15 into, sorry, minus the forever growth rate of 0 0.10. Are you people understanding why have I done the presentation like this? All right. And if you have this presentation ready, calculate the terminal value 15 into 1.1 into 0.5 divided by 0 0.05 gives me 165 as my terminal value. 165 as my terminal value. Why did I not write the numbers here? Because I have written 2016 over here. It may mislead your presentation. So once you have the cash flows, kindly very immediately do the present value calculation, do the DCF and give me the final answer waiting for it. People in the class kindly give me the final answer waiting for it, literally waiting for it. Final answer.